I'm hitting the record button right now because we're getting started for a brand new edition of the Bid Nerds. Welcome, everybody. This is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer. My name is John Polnick. I'm your host of Bid Nerds coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm right on the Las Vegas Strip. We are the greatest live show on the Strip right now <laughs> because we're the only live show on the Las Vegas Strip right now, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, coming to you from San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay with all the fog and everything. How you doing, Michael Deeb? Excellent, JP. What's happening, man? Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Uh, I got a chance to get a little coffee. I saw your carbon out this morning. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Load with yeah. those amazing looking croissants. You want to give a plug to wherever the heck that was? Yeah. Uh, so Esther has been, you know, as we've come back to San Francisco, we've been hearing about all the, the new and hot bougie coffee places. Mm. So today we tried Ritual Coffee on Hate Street. Um, and uh, I gotta tell you, sounds so bougie, yeah. So, so JP, um, I am a lightweight <laughs> when it comes to coffee. I like, I like mine watered down, black but watered down, mm. no cream and sugar. And this stuff is rocket fuel. If I make it to the end of the show without having to exit to the restroom, that'll be a miracle. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, if uh, if we if I ever find my way over to San Francisco after you've cleared out your house, well, you yeah. are taking me to that place because you know For I'm a coffee sure. guy. The best coffee shop in Las Vegas right now is my place. Uh, Which one? My, uh, my place, Rochelle's, where I oh, live. Yeah, we have right. an actual espresso machine in that's the right. house. I, how uh, did I forget that? And my that? wife yeah. was a professional barista. She owned a coffee shop for many years, and so uh, it's pretty cool to have since, the uh, goods uh, in since, the place. Uh, yeah. Since Hearst Media bought Bring a Trailer, they will mm -hmm. sell anything on auction. Are we to believe that Rochelle actually bought your espresso machine out of Italy off of Bring a Trailer? Uh, that may have happened. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm sure it says Momo on the back of it or something like that, uh, which would be dope. I would buy a Momo espresso machine. Yeah. I'd trade in the one that we have and just go get that. Uh, how cool would that be? Come on, you know, oh, mental that's... note, call Momo. Um, yeah. I just want to know how many stickers are already on Rochelle's uh, espresso machine. No, you can't put stickers on them. You know, they, I, oh. you know, I hate it when they do that and stuff. I don't know. But, you know, you can't see the back of it because we're in a kitchen. It's not like a, you know, right. a coffee shop where you see the back of it. Man, yeah. there are some cool looking espresso machines out there. Yep. Uh, the one they have at Public Us, if you're ever in Las Vegas in the art yeah. district, uh, go to check out Public Us. It's one of my favorite coffee shops in the city. And they have an espresso machine that is absolutely yeah. a work of art this is probably totally. a hundred thousand dollar machine yep. and it's yep. just unbelievable that thing the, uh, the cool the cool italian ones still have the big arm and you throw the press right you, you yeah, roll the yeah. arm down and you yeah. and you build the pressure and as that thing releases that becomes your coffee those are yeah you rarely is... see those but um you know not far from us is north beach in san francisco that's our little italy and there are a few places that have some cool old espresso machines like that they are dope yeah, it's like brass and chrome <laughs> and polished aluminum and tubes and hoses and, yep. you know, like billet. It's like bespoke, this thing. It's un. I mean, yeah. it really is cool. Yeah, um, yeah it's like four group. So, uh, you know, the one we yeah. have is it, the one we have is actually a very pretty one, but it's but it's just a single group because obviously we're right. serving coffee to the neighbors. Of course, if the neighbors knew we had this good of coffee, they'd probably be knocking on our door. For sure. All right. Well, so uh, welcome to Bid Nerds, guys. If you want, if you're a fan of the show, we really, really double appreciate you, triple appreciate you today. Uh, it's the end of the week. This is something that we do every day, Monday through Friday, during the nine o'clock ish hour uh, Pacific time. Um, we talk about the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. We make predictions on what these cars will sell for. Uh, we talk about all the little weird things that are about these cars. We talk about whether or not they belong on the platforms that they're being sold at. And we, this is a nerd out. I mean, we are nerding out. <laughs> on these cars man we are not kidding when we say yeah. we're nerds um so we do keep track of our predictions and we, we have a little, little little bit of a competition and uh, there was a bit of a smackdown the other day i had a really good day where i got everything right um which is very rare but uh we've been actually other than that we've had a fairly even week and yesterday mike i think you got yourself pretty you got yourself within a fighting chance of uh at least breaking even this week you're gonna have to have yeah. a really good a day uh, before right. we get to our uh, to, 
to going over the predictions from yesterday. Uh, we just want to say, uh, again, thank you. Subscribe, like, share, let everybody know about the channel. And uh, if you're brand new, you probably came to the channel looking at a picture of that amazing 23,000-mile uh, BMW M3 E30 uh, Ooh, sport, sport Evo. Evo. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that right after our uh, right after we go over yesterday's numbers. Yeah, that that car. I'm excited to review that car. Those things are badass. Wow. Wow. All wow, right. wow. Okay. So what? How, so what happened yesterday? What's going on? Well, we... yeah, yesterday was pretty even, JP. Uh, yeah. I got you back a little bit, but it was really close. Um, our star car yesterday, if I remember, was the uh, what was it yesterday? It was the was DeLorean. The DeLorean. Yeah, yeah, the DeLorean. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's in DeLorean wound up being a little softer than we thought. A yeah. 1981 DeLorean with like 25,000 miles out of Texas or something. I or no Southern California. Really nice car. Um, no nonsense, no stories, no modifications, just an honest driver car, not a, a super low mile, like lawn queen. Um, I thought that car should bring 50,000. You were a little softer on it at 48. The car sold for $44,000. You got the win. Doc um, Brown's we, signature didn't give it an extra oh, five grand, which I is what know, we were I both kind of thinking. Counted on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Christopher Lloyd's sitting on the dashboard. Uh, that's a real, <laughs> that's a nerd touch. I love it. Um, <laughs> Uh, we all looked at a beautiful 2002 Honda S2000, another mile car, black with full red. O2 was the first glass uh, rear roof. There are probably one or two other things that this car had that I just not I don't know enough about the AP1s to tell you about. Um, but this one looked to be in really great original condition, even had the correct Bridgestone SO2 tires, which I think were the OEM uh, spec on the car. And when you see that level of detail, you know that the owner is pretty fastidious, which I like when you're buying a cool collector car like this. Um, I thought 30000 would take it home. You thought twenty eight, and that car sold for twenty seven seven fifty. JP, you were 250 bucks away from a Yahtzee. I, that I, must have hurt. I, I'm going to tell you what, you know, it, it would have hurt much more if I had gone with my gut because I, I bet – a little tight, to, you know, I, I put it a little closer to you thinking that, all right, well, you know, I don't want to give us too much of a spread here uh, yeah. in order to try to get a W on, on the win here. But my yeah. first, the first number that came to my head was 2750. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, well, so I would have been like uh, just, you know, or 27,500. Yeah. It yeah, would, have would have been, been even as close. Yeah. Just as close on the other side of it. Yeah. Oh, we man. It was it. like, holy cow. These guys. Yeah. But I, I will tell you that yesterday uh, when we were going over this car on the show, I was going, man, do I sell my 997.2 convertible? Uh, and just get one of these and have and yeah. and, and pocket you know tw Mike the 997 is worth almost twice as much as this car but I don't think it right. is twice the car uh, no, you know I mean not. this car is almost like ew, do I get one I mean I don't know it's, it's not on so brand for me drive but. yeah no not at all but they are so fun I, again this one I think just has a ton of eyeball with the full mm -hmm. red interior on the black O2 I believe is the only year you could get it done in this colorway so this has to be one of just a handful like that for the whole world so i a really really neat car um and i think it was really well bought and this guy is going to enjoy it and probably sell it for more money than he paid for it no matter how much he drives it um another enviable car jp on bring a trailer out of uh, my neck of the woods here in the bay area was this incredibly low mile 1987 Volkswagen GTI 16 valve. This was an mm. 87 car with 16,000 miles on it. And man, <laughs> was this thing look like a brand new car or what? Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh, JP, you explained to me how these early 16 valves, uh, I think we said pre 89 had those square lights like their, you Golf know, I need, I need to I need to actually mention something in that. I think I, I may have actually been wrong on that. The more I think about it, and I'm still going from memory here, but I think 87s introduced uh, round headlights. Uh, so or, or 80, it's 88s. like 87, 88, something like that. 89. Yeah, it was it was like a different trim level package or something. Yeah, because uh, this but, one yeah. is an 87 has the square yeah. lights. The other thing I thought that was also very interesting at the end of the show before or at the end of the review on this one, you said it's an easy fix, like that they yeah. sell kits where you can swap it over to the round grill. And in that regard, uh, man, I would do that. If I own this car, I know it's kind of sacrilegious, but I'd love the round headlights and just keep the square ones and sell it with the car later. Yeah. I yeah. thought this car would bring 19 and I, man, I got you worked up because you bet the over, which is rare for you. Yeah. You said 20. This car got stolen. For fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty bucks, really well bought. Congratulations, new owner! You have an enviable 
ride. That's a sick car. I love I, it. I have a prediction that we will see this car on the platform again. I have a feeling yeah. whoever bought this is going to go out and take the right pictures and do. I mean, there's really nothing to do to it. You don't want right. to upgrade a dang thing. But yeah. I do think it wasn't it wasn't presented well. These photos are not the greatest. Um, it, it, but it, it is. I don't understand why this car didn't go way more. Something's weird there. I don't know. Yeah. So I bet 19 and, uh, and I won that one because it was mm -hmm. way under my bid. Um, we also looked at an 88 Pontiac Fiero GT, otherwise known as a, as a <laughs> your Paul, favorite car in the world. Uh, Everyone Paul, knows it. A Paul Jarrett special. Um, <laughs> I managed to keep my food down and get through my review of this car. I said 16, you believed in it at 17 and I made fun of you because this guy just bought this car for like 18500 last August on Bring a Trailer. And I told you, I said, JP, there's no way this guy's getting his money back. And you said, Michael, there's entirely possible it would have a late uh, uh, a late fury. This one did not. It, I, my prediction on this car bore out. It was bid to $12,666 or about six thousand dollars less than this guy paid for it so man he has a firm grip on that car good yeah. luck sucker he, he might oh, have yeah. a uh countage replica kit he's about to install on this one there's a, there's a, <laughs> yeah, you sure. know the other thing too is that this car was represented really well the photos were terrific there's some really nice yep. driving videos of the video i actually yep. you should go look at those i i'm still kind of shocked by this i think Frankly, this is one of those things where it was bought too publicly. If this car, if no one had ever heard of this car, if this car came out of the, right. out of the woodwork uh, and we didn't all know what he bought it for six months ago or whatever, um, if this car was just like brand new to the internet, I think it would have brought more money. But I think something about the dude and the way it was presented, even though it's, it's photographed very well, I just feel like... Yeah, I, I think it, if it were, if it had just popped on the scene, people were like, oh my gosh, a fresh new Fiero, let's get into it. Yeah, I don't know. Neither one of us want this car, but still nope. kind of neat. Yep. Well, he owns it, uh, yeah. and and I mean, where does he go from there? That's a bummer. But uh, we also looked at, uh, and this was an interesting one. Mm. We were pretty close on this car as well. Um, it's a, a basically it's a a 1961 Volkswagen that was made into a fiberglass 55 style. Porsche 356 pre-A replica coupe. Um, this was meant to look like a Continental. Uh, JP, if you remember, while we were running through the photos, I looked at a close-up uh, that you had put up of the Continental emblem, and I said, that is not the Porsche one. Um, and I was sure of that. So I looked it up, and what I think he did is he took a 1950s Lincoln Continental. I was going to say it was a Lincoln Continental. That logo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, uh, touche, very well done. That's hilarious. He used the mm. Lincoln Continental script. Um, I mean, it is, a, it is a it is a fake Continental, totally. so why not yeah. use the uh, fake? Yeah. That's actually pretty yeah. funny and, if you think and of it. And to remind That's our audience, trolling this, right there. as the story goes, Porsche brought this uh, top-of-the-line uh, model with all their bells and whistles to the United States, and Ford lost their shit um, and basically uh, threatened to file suit to Porsche that the Lincoln brand already owed the rights to the Continental name. Uh, and Porsche acquiesced and changed the name to uh, the Europa or something like that. I, the European, I think, is the name. So did, uh, did these... Porsche have a legal department back then? Oh, I mean, at all? Exactly. Did any? No. Did they have anyone? Because it's like no, they no. named the 911, the 901. They get smacked down by you know Peugeot just a couple no. years after this. It's the, you think after this car, they uh, the Continental thing? Oh, maybe no. we should check the nomenclature of other cars before we name our no, stuff. No, 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 uh, no, nah, no. we'll just what could go wrong? <laughs> you, know? you have I mean, to understand. Like... A lot of these car companies, JP, when they bought their first warehouses and started building. A lot of these places, especially in the UK, didn't yeah. even have a cement floor. These yeah. guys were working on wet earth, like dirt, to yeah. build these cars. I mean, yeah. the imperfection abounds on all of these things. Uh, anyways, this you and I both thought this was a really cool build, I think, uh, despite having like heated seats and electric window lifts and a few other modern amenities. Um, it'd probably be a really cool car to drive with an 1800 cc motor uh, it's built on a 61 volkswagen chassis so you could register it smog exempt almost anywhere in the lower 48 so um i said 55 you said 57 the car was bid to 52 which means the reserve was set higher uh so it's anybody's guess if it was at 55 or maybe even 65,000, because you and i both assumed looking at the details that this was probably a hundred thousand or more bid so yeah, nice I, I just I don't understand that one at all. I mean, it's yeah. you can get a real 
three fifty six in that yeah. kind of number. I mean, you're not going right. to get one as th- this nice, but who cares? It's real. You can- yep, 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 yep. So there you go. That was the day. I had three. You had two. Uh, mm. I kind of got you back, but let's remind the audience yesterday, you had a total flush. Uh, five wins, including a Yahtzee. Uh, the first ever Bid Nerds washout where one one nerd got them all right. So that was uh, well to you this uh, this week. Well nerded. Uh, well, let's see well what uh, let's see what we got today. All right. So yeah. th- again, all right. So that was yesterday's cars. Let's talk about today's cars on the Daily yep. Nerd Out and the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring trailers where we predict the prices of cars on the auction sites. What are we going to start with? If you saw the thumbnail, you're probably pretty excited about this car that oh, we're going to be talking about. JP, first. this is holy free holies. Man, it's so it's funny. I, so what? Uh, it's an E30 BMW M3, but the 1990. Um, uh, basically, how do I say this? Uh, these cars were homologation specials, so that uh, you know, um, Opel and Porsche and Alpha, not Porsche, but uh, BMW and Mercedes, could race these cars in touring car, both uh, in their national country. Like, so this car would have been in the DTM, which is the Dutch Touring Masters or whatever. And then uh, in the European, the, uh, the what is it? The ETCC, the European Touring Car Championship. Um, so a lot of these teams would race uh, regionally and then they would race sort of internationally throughout Europe. And, and the cars had to evolve to continue to homologate better parts so that the cars could remain comp- competitive in fierce competition against their rival brands. This car is the byproduct of this. So this is called the Sport Evolution or sometimes referred to as the Evo 3 because it was the third itineration of a development of the original E30 BMW M3. By the time this car came around and it was never sold in the US, these cars were only sold overseas, the motor had grown from 2.3 to 2.5 liter. Horsepower had swelled from like, I don't know, I think the original cars were like 180 all the way up to 238 horsepower. Uh, these cars had a, uh, a five-speed manual transmission with the dog leg first. Uh, it's made by the German brand Getrag. Uh, they had really super bolstered uh, seats that had Alcantara on the steering wheel and the sides of the seats. And then the beautiful uh, BMW M tricolory sort of hurricane cloth, as it's often referred to. Um, just amazing. BBS wheels, the mesh wheels. These cars handled well. They revved high. They were fast. They were nimble and they were almost impossible to get. They only made a few of these to homologate. I believe our car here is one of 600. It's sold out of Miami, Florida, and uh, it has just 24,000 miles. It's basically 38,000 kilometers on the odometer, which translates to just 24,000 miles. So it's offered in basically brand new condition. It's like barely broken in. Uh, you never see these in the U.S., so they're super rare, and they command a massive premium. M3s have become six-figure cars, but this M3 is going to go for, I'm guessing, over a quarter of a million dollars. What an unbelievable driving car and destined to to just continue to go up in value. You could buy this car, drive it occasionally, and it's like uh, buying a savings bond. It's just going to keep getting going up and up and up. But look at that interior, JP. Is that not the coolest thing you've seen on an early E30 M3 that all that trick stuff came from the factory? What do you think? Uh, I mean, come on. I mean, how much can we talk about BMW E30 M3s? Apparently a lot. I mean, you know, we kind of skip over these a lot of times when we see them in the list because it's like, all right, well, we talk about them a lot. But this one is so amazingly special uh, with all this extra amazing trim. Uh, You know, and and the thing is, from the outside, it really doesn't look like anything other than a regular, if there's anything such thing as an E30 M3. Uh, But, you know, obviously it is special. So that's bringing the extra money. I yeah. will tell you that I, I'm going to go ahead and say it here. I'll, I'll say it uh, on a split screen with the two of us. Yeah. Uh, I don't get it. I don't what? effing get it. I love BMW E30 M3s. They're literally one of the top five greatest cars of all time. But to spend, tw- I mean, this car is just nothing but a museum piece. I don't want this car because I don't think you can drive it or would drive oh. it. It'd be too much of a risk. I would oh, rather man. get I would rather get a regular E30 BMW M3 that you could go drive around. This thing is just too pretty and too nice, and it's just it's a big deal. It's an Evo Sport, so you're gonna spend twice uh, as much money or more. So, so here's here's my argument. So basically, mm-hmm. again, we're talking about holy grail E3 mm-hmm. and three, and 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 to that end, with the high value that you're talking about. I would still love to drive this. I, I'd put clear film on the front of it, and I would love to drive it Angel's Crest and and hunt down 
younger, more superior Porsches because <laughs> right. this car has the ability to do that. But here's where it's interesting, JP. Here's my mm -hmm. argument. It's it's the drive across the desert from Vegas that I'm following you and we're going to park, let's just say, in a motel. Mm. You know, Maybe not Ben's house per se if we're staying at Ben's house, but I mm -hmm. don't want to leave this car in a parking lot overnight or on yeah. a city street in LA. I would be scared it would get swiped. That's the part that scares me is mm -hmm. I wouldn't even want to leave it uh, You know, at the, the, what's that hotel that Esther and I always stay at downtown LA. I wouldn't want to leave it, even though they park my car out front every time I stay there, yeah. I wouldn't want this car sitting out under their awning in the middle for the whole world to see. That's the part that scares me is that somebody would steal it. But as far as driving it, I don't think I'm gonna crash it. I don't care if it gets a stone chip. Um, I want to enjoy it because I love to drive my cars, but it is precious enough that I'd worry about being able to keep it. And that's the thing. It's that's too, really weird. too precious. I mean, there's yeah, cars yeah. that you could own that are worth twice as much money that who cares? Like if you go get an Aventador right. or something like that, you could drive yeah. around and park it next to Hyundai's who gives a crap. It's just an yeah. Aventador. Yeah. I just said that it's just yep. a stupid, whatever. Um, yeah. and, it, and I like those, the cars I do, but, yeah. but you can, you can go to any cars and coffee and see 40 of them, you know, right. an E30 BMW. W M3 Evo is not oh. a car. You could see a bunch of M3s, E30 M3s, but an E30 M3 Evo, probably yeah. not. Now, again, you know, we talk about this sometimes, like how much room do you have? How much money do you have? You know, right. it, it's, this is, if you're going to be spending a quarter million dollars on this car, this is not the only quarter million dollar car you have. Right. You have a, you have a fleet of stuff. So this is for the guy that wants the unattainable uh, and, and wants to add it to the collection. That's why, again, I say it's really, it's just, it's not for me. Even, even if I did jump up in the tax bracket significantly, it's probably <laughs> never going to be me. It's the, you know, I, yeah. there's a bunch of other stuff I'm getting before I drop a quarter million on one. Of yeah. Those. So now I got, I have to say, and the, the owner of this car is going to be pissed if he sees our show before his auction closes. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, Eric Keller, who owns um, Enthusiast Auto Group out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, they only sell BMW M cars. They are mm. the M motorsports specialist in the United States. Eric Keller is a great guy, um, very, very good friend um, in that regard because he's just a, he's he's the expert on these cars. He has recently, and I'm I hope he doesn't get mad at me for this. He recently acquired a car exactly like this, but mm. this is not the same car. But he has. I want to say like a 25,000 mile 1990 M3 Sport Evolution in the same color. Now, this car only came in two colors, the, the brilliant red um, and the uh, black, which has the little red trim mm, on the bumpers front mm. and rear. Um, and so I imagine his car, if he doesn't plan on keeping it himself, which he ought to because it's just as nice as this one, uh, mm. may come to market uh, probably later this summer or this year. Because uh, well, I'm going to be that, watching this auction. Yeah, yeah, he just acquired it. Yeah, and I, I listen. I, I know for a fact that he bought it right. Um, and so he'll be very interested to see if this guy, who's not the BMW expert, can bring over two hundred fifty thousand for this. The other thing I have to ask you, JP, before we get off this car is at two hundred and twenty-five thousand, which is all the money mm -hmm. is this car reached its reserve because where are you going to find another one with twenty three thousand miles now i just told you eric keller is going to bring one to market but i'm sure he's going to get two hundred fifty thousand because he's the m3 guy he's the e30 guy in this country mm. yeah i mean the, the reserve can't be higher than 200 can it it I mean, could. would BAT let him do that? Maybe to I get don't the know. car on the site? I don't know. I mean, Maybe, this car yeah. is already way past what I think they should be worth. I mean, right. six-figure E30 M3s, okay. I mean, I get it. But yeah. Yeah. this high, come on. This is just, no, no. Somebody's going to get, I mean, I, I know every, I know most people disagree with me, uh, but I don't care because I just, whatever, man, I'm just over this car. I, I, I'm over this car as much as you are over that, that, that Fiero. I mean, it's, it's really that bad. I just, I don't care about this thing. It's so, it's way too overpriced. It is not worth yeah. this much money at all. All right. Okay. What's okay. it, what's it going to go for? What's ever, what's, what's the Kool-Aid? What are the Kool-Aid drinkers buying this thing for? So, so I know you're sitting down, but hang on to your hats for this one, JP. This car already at 225,000 already has 20 bids. So there's action on this car. Um, but I don't know how much of that action is going to remain up in this rarefied air. Mm -hmm. Um, I originally put uh, 250, and then this morning I thought, oh, it's probably going to break that real easy. 260. I'm going to go back. I'm going to say 250 thousand dollars, and it, it sells. 
Yeah, that's yeah, my bid. I mean, so you, gonna, was, you kept saying 250, 250, 250. I'm going to go yeah. under. I'm going to go yeah. 245. I mean, I think that's it's a good bet. That's, a, that's another yeah. 20, 20 grand from where it's at. Yeah. And it, mm, yeah. yeah. It's it's definitely there. It's right there. The question is if this if this guy, you know, set the reserve too high. We'll see. You know, the other one last thing too. It's like this money for this car with how many miles? 20 something thousand miles? 23,000 miles. 23,000 miles. Yeah. If it were 2000 miles if it were delivery miles okay now that now yeah. we're having a conversation because it really is a museum piece but 23,000 yeah. miles this car's been driven what are we, yeah. what are we doing well uh, listen to this if this car goes to 250 and it mm -hmm. sells now these cars are eligible to import people are going to start bringing in evo ones and the johnny cachettos mm -hmm. and all these mm -hmm. other special e30s that we never got in the u.s and we'll see more of these come to market uh for sure because now you can bring them in under the 25 year rule uh yep. so uh, uh, which is cool because i'd love to have them here i'd love to i'd love to chase one up to newcomb's ranch on a friday morning that'd be yeah cool. it's like the 993 rs's i mean you know yeah, those were yeah. half million dollar cars now they're three hundred thousand dollar cars because you because can bring you, them here. you yep, yeah yep that's exactly so right. all right uh all right let's go on to the next thing what do we got Okay, so JP, I just thought this was a really cool car. Mm. Um, this is a 2012 BMW 550i on cars and bids. Um, it's got some miles on it, but not that many. 68,500. This is the just the basic 550. Even at a glance, it looks like an five because he put the little um, corner things on the front fenders and he put the M5 badge. I'm not in the the batch engineering of a car but if you look closely jp this is a 4.4 liter turbocharged v8 with a usually rare six-speed manual it's got the bmw um uh, sport seats which i love these seats are so incredibly comfortable they are the best seats money can buy in a in a sports sedan or a car for that matter um triple black chrome wheel or uh, silver wheels i just something about this car just oozes understated cool this is a great cute car very under the radar and and think about this jp out of uh, syracuse new york this car's got sixty-eight thousand miles on it so there's tons of life left in this car and yet it's at sixteen thousand five hundred on 17 bids if this car sells for under 25 grand is that not like a pretty incredible value for just an everyday driving sedan with a manual transmission i just thought that was a really neat car and you just don't see these modern cars especially sedans with a manual so i thought it was worth taking a look at what's your opinion do you love this as much as i do or am i am i out on a on a, on a limb here did the m5 of the generation come with a manual I believe it did, but again, you're talking like probably less than eight percent take rate. Uh, well, very, still, very I, rare. Look, yeah. this the the reason if this car goes under what it's actually worth, it's called. This is what it's called. It's called karma. You don't put an M5 badge on a car that's not an M5. You don't yeah. put an M3 badge on an on a. This is like what this is something that we did in high school oh look i've got an e30 and it's just a it's a 318 and it's you know the exhaust is dragging and uh you know, but we're gonna put an m3 badge on it you're not fooling anyone that's stupid it's too yeah. stupid and yeah i mean the car is actually yeah it's a, it's a pretty cool car and yeah those seats are great and yeah i love that it's a manual so i gotta give props to the car but just take the stupid badge off and now you got something i I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's that gill, that little uh, air vent on the side of the the front quarter fenders. Mm -hmm. He actually did body work to put those in. That is an M5 detail that would not have come on a regular 550. And so he took the car to the body shop and had to repaint those uh, fenders to get those things on there. And that's where he ruined it. And what's interesting too is the body shop that did it did a horrible job. There is a ton of orange peel on those fenders. Oh um, gosh, and so really? I think all that is going to hold this car back. But to see a black on black 550 this you know this car makes jp this car makes 400 horsepower and has 450 pound foot of torque and a stick i mean that is got yeah. to be a great driving car and if it's got m sport suspension and the m sport seats man it is about as comfortable a car as you could find for the money so i just thought this was pretty neat out of syracuse new york well i mean it's in the right place for it because look i mean there's snow on the ground the roads are terrible there you know there's corrosion every this car is going to get destroyed if it's driven daily which it looks like <laughs> it is and so if you're going to drive a car into the city uh on the east coast if you're going to go through all the stupid uh i mean this is yeah why not why not destroy a car like this because that is the perfect driver to be destroyed um this is not a car that's got any kind of value long term um no. but it does look like 
gets fun to drive, so beat the hell out of it. Don't worry about leaving it in the rain, the snow, and the corrosion uh, until those poorly painted fenders uh, rust right <laughs> off the dang thing. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right, so what's it, what's it going to go for? It's at 16.5 now, JP, but again, because I think he did kind of a hack job on it, I mm-hmm. think it's only going to make it to $19,000. So okay, wait. It's at sixteen five. You think it's going to make it to nineteen? Yeah. Uh, how 19. many bids we got? We got seventeen bids. Yeah, seventeen I think this bids. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it another two thousand dollars and give it eighteen five. I think this is going to stall out. I think this is one of those. It, this right. has the potential that it could not get any more bids from here on out today. When was the last time it had yeah. a bid? Yeah, I guess it had uh, a bid an morning, hour ago. Uh, so, this, yeah. yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. So people are looking this, at it. Was, it. Yeah, it was at like ten or eleven thousand all week, and then it just jumped last night and overnight this morning. So, uh, it it you know it may well, sell, but you know, I mean, this is a cars and bids car. I I will say that cars and bids has kind of a lesser audience than certainly BAT from not just size and scope, but just kind of like all around type of enthusiast that hang out on cars and bids. And I like cars and bids, uh, but I just feel like it's, it's, it's going downhill and this might be a car that fits, uh, fits that model. But you know, I have seen BMWs over and over and over do very poorly on cars and bids, particularly manual ones, particularly ones that I bought, you know? Um, so I don't get it. Yeah. I'm saying that a lot this morning. I'm, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess I need some more coffee or something like that. But uh, <laughs> the BMWs today are no. I I would love to drive this car as a daily and not worry about it. this. Would be the perfect throwaway, awesome everyday car. Seriously, yeah, yeah. For it's sure. funny that for we're sure. sitting here saying a car, yeah, a throwaway car that's got 400 totally. horsepower and a manual and yeah. it's BMW. But really, yeah, it's, it's like it's hmm. it's it's the H and M of of uh, daily transport, just throwaway clothing. You know, <laughs> if I if I did buy the car, I would show up, give the guy the money, I would pull out a screwdriver. Driver, and I would look at him <laughs> while I pried the badge off before I drove it away. I wouldn't drive it anywhere. I'd be just like, I'm looking I, at you in the eye as I, I rip have, this thing off. I don't care if I, it takes paint with me. There might be members of the audience that don't know you well enough to yeah. understand. You are absolutely telling the truth. <laughs> Not even totally kidding. Do, he would totally <laughs> do that. Just side eye the be guy like, while he's just wrenching on the grill. Just just cook and like, get it off there. <laughs> it would make an awful sound. It might yep. chip the Wouldn't paint. Uh, it care. would leave goop on it. I'd be like, okay, yeah. now I can drive this car. What? And, and, and then the emblem would fall to the ground and JP would drive over it as he left the guy's house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So I throw it at him. Like, here's your badge. <laughs> Bounce off his All chest. Right, so- you might want this for the next car that you turn into an M5. The holy grail of BMW E33s aside, this 2004 <laughs> Porsche 911 C4S right. is really freaking cool. So, JP, no, no, I, I, on New Year's, uh, Esther and I went with the Breakfast Club Rally, who has only been in existence since June of last year here in Northern California. And on our way home, the final leg of the rally, Esther and I were stuck behind a 2004 C4S in white, a coupe with like a – it had like a – either a luggage rack or a bike rack on the roof. Mm. But uh, I came home and I, I couldn't wait to tell you how cool the rally was, how cool the people in the collective group of cars was, how big the rally was. And then I spent 15 minutes fawning over how unbelievably gorgeous it was to follow a 996 C4S. And then you said to me, you are on record as saying that the 996 C4S is the most beautiful Porsche rear end of all time. And I cannot argue with you. It's Mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. So when I saw this black one, JP, I was like, we have to look at this car. 23,000 miles on the odometer, black on black out of Champlain, New York. This car was equipped with the sport exhaust and the sport shifter. Um, It has the beautiful sort of 996 uh, GT2 style wheels. The only thing that this car doesn't have that I want would be the seat. These seats are still very comfortable, but the sports seats are something that's really special. It's got the right miles. It's absolutely the right color. And um, and yet our car here is suffering because it's, at, it's only got four bids. It is at $40,000, <laughs> which means it's approaching the number that it's worth. But I wonder if somebody tried to throw a knockout blow and it's sort of um, – uh, depressed some of the the you know build up action that you would expect to see to engage a, several different underbidders leading up to the close of auction. Uh, it's an argument for another time, but let's take a look at this beautiful car. JP, do you love it as much as I do? And you know I am bearish on black cars. I would rather have one in any other color, but man, I would rock this car in a heartbeat. 
yes, I have said it over and over and over again that this is one of the best looking Porsches of all time. Uh, you're saying it, the languishing at forty thousand dollars. This is more money than a C4 S996 has ever seen since Ooh. they were new. I wow. mean, these are not worth that much. I mean, they are coming up, but they forty thousand bucks? No way. I mean, they've been going. They, look, it does have very low miles, and yes, okay, I have owned four c4s 996s and wow they are absolutely magnificent cars and people have been saying for well over a decade now that this is a future classic i mean i remember seeing articles when i got my first one back in i don't know i want to say like 2008 or something like that he was a future classic future classic future classic and you could get them for 20 grand or less i mean these cars for a long time you could get there was a moment there where you could get these for under 20 with higher miles of course um but those days seem to finally be over the dark days of the 996 uh have left us but the thing is, uh, you know, and I don't know. Did you look at? Uh, did you look at the history on this thing of maintenance? How are we doing there? Oh, I don't think I did. I I was just oogling over the bodywork. Yeah, thinking, it is Man, so pretty. Yeah. But you know, I mean, obviously, IMS uh, is something, and it, that's probably been done. But twenty three thousand miles. I say this every time someone talks about a nine nine six. People talk. People fawn over these low mile ones, but these are the ones that blow up. These are the ones that didn't have any factory maintenance done when they were young under warranty. The rear main seal, the the camshaft seals. There's so many seals that that fail on these. The only the only one that the the only failure that causes a uh, you know a complete grenade is of course the intermediate shaft bearing, uh, the rear main seal and the camshafts you know seals and all that stuff. Those failures will not cause uh, destruction of the engine, but they will cause a mess and they will cause you a bunch of money right. to you know uh, the sweet spot really for this car is one that's got 40 or 50,000 miles and all the maintenance has all that stuff has been updated um, yeah. because you know if this were a two hundred thousand dollar car all right ten thousand dollars eight thousand dollars in maintenance wouldn't really be a big deal but we're talking about a forty something thousand dollar car and yeah. really before this day before looking at this auction um, it, you know when this car popped up earlier in the week I'm thinking all right that's gonna bring in the high 30s and it's already at 40 with time to go that's that's as high as a, a 4s goes period yeah. um, they don't yeah. go in the forties. This will be the first for, and this will <sighs> probably set a new bar. Um, well, because I mean, in forty at that price, you were in nine nine seven territory, um, right? In or good nine nine seven fortieth anniversary territory as well. You know, if that's well, the same miles. Yeah, but I mean, is a 40th anniversary car uh, as valuable as a 4S? I, I don't know. Uh, I y- think so. You think so, and I know yeah. a lot of people would agree with you, but most people would prefer the wide body and the and the drama uh, I, I, look of this car. I agree for, with you from an aesthetic standpoint, but the, uh, if I recall, the 40th anniversaries are numbered, and I would just think a numbered Porsche with more power and lighter weight is going to bring more money as a collector down the road, even if it's the inferior car from a, I don't know, aesthetic. Well, or I mean, it is the, it yeah. is the superior car. Cause even it has more power. It comes with an X 51 yeah. uh, yeah. kit, uh, you know, from the factory. But that said, the narrow body nine, nine sixes have never really found a place. They are starting to come up finally, especially dot two nine, nine sixes. But you know, in the, in the, the, uh, what do you call it? The anniversary car that you're talking about does have the same front, uh, does have the same front spoiler thing. You know, right. It has the same gills in the front. It just doesn't have the wide body. It doesn't have the gills in the back fender. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I will say it on record in, as an owner of a nine, nine, seven dot two, no less, um, <laughs> you know, the nose and re- uh, the, the C four S nine, nine, six is Definitely better looking than oh, yeah. almost any 997, unless you're talking about a GT version. People hate these headlights. People call these the fried egg. This is not, for the, the record, egg. let me get on record here. Yeah. Uh, this is not a fried egg. If you call this a fried egg, you can't call yourself a Porsche <laughs> fan because that's not what this is. Stop calling yeah. these fried eggs. Um, the fried egg is the is the first gen dot one that sh- that is shared with the uh, with the Boxster, and it goes all the way down here and comes up, and it has the turn signal down in this slot here. So whatever, little. I mean, th- the show is called Bid Nerds. So we're just living up to the nerd part here. Um, All right. So, yeah, I love this car. I think it is one of the most beautiful cars in the world. Uh, The interior is still a 996 interior. That is an issue. Uh, as much as I love 996s, I am not a 996 interior fan. Uh, Although aesthetically... uh, 
aesthetically isn't the right word. Ergonomically, they are superior to the 997 in so many ways. Oh, it looks like this one. Uh, we're looking at a video here. It looks like it has a short shift kit. You look when he's pulling the, yeah, that definitely is a, uh, looks like they put a 997 sport, or GT. I told you. What's that? No, no, it came, it came, it was equipped with the sport exhaust and the sport shifter. So that's okay. Factory okay. One. Yeah, put, good. It came from the, that's on the build sheets. That's, that's really fantastic. Cool. Um, so yeah. these little, these little, you can't really see in this video, but I don't know if you guys could see my, uh, over here on the left where the door handle is, there's this ledge on the side of the seat that is the perfect yep. place um, to put when, when you're driving to put your arm. Can you guys see my arm up on the yep. side? Like in a normal car, you like on a 997, you got to put your arm all the way up here on the side of the window. But on, <laughs> on the 996, they designed it so that your arm is like right there level. It's freaking great. Um, anyways, whatever. Uh, what do you think out. this, we are totally nerding out. Specific <laughs> yeah. 996s. What do you think this car is going to go for Michael Deeb? I, I, JP, I still think, I know you're going to think I'm nuts, but I think this car is going to bring $45,000. Jeez. I mean, it's, I guess it's possible with low miles and yeah. it, it also, it also may not get another bid. I, there's something weird about this particular auction with only four bids at 40,000. This could be one of those ones where everybody's like, I, I like, there's just weird juju on it and it doesn't get another bid. That also wouldn't surprise me, but I believe this car to be worth 45 grand and it should sell at that price. But, but I'm going to say 41, um, oh. and cause it's a dealer, it's in New York. You got to ship it somewhere. Um, yep. whoever buys this is probably going to just put it next to their Evo BMW E30 <laughs> and they're probably not going to drive it. And it's just, it's not a collector so, car. This is something to drive. It's got low uh, miles and, yeah, and it's, it. and it's black on black and it is the, per, I mean, put some coilovers on this thing and done. Ooh. Boom. You are, yeah. you've got one of the coolest Porsches out there. Um, yep. but again, in the mid forties to high, you are really close. You're in nine, nine, seven S you know, dot one. Right. Um, and that is just a better car. It's got the bigger engine. It's got way more yeah. reliability. It's just, it's just as much All as right. I like these. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, oh yeah. So 41, you said 45. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. All right. We're so way JP, over today. So we got to get, yeah, going. yeah. Okay. Well, let's run through this, but it, this is a shame that we're not going to park and spend a lot of time on this because I, I don't even think I knew this car existed. A 1980 mm -hmm. Jeep CJ7 Renegade with 45,000 miles out of Golden, Colorado. The thing that caught my attention, JP, a 304 cubic inch V8 <laughs> made it to a four-speed manual transmission. How in the world did they even get a, a freaking V8 under the hood of this thing? Is that not the coolest one? I, I didn't even know they made a V8 for these cars. I, I'm totally blown away. Well, most of them had most of them had V8s actually uh, in that era. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I the CJ5s have... and then, yeah, so a lot of them have that 6s and stuff like that. There's a lot of room just, under there. I just all thought these were really big four and six cylinders. Um, yeah. I did not know that they had V8s. Again, I grew up in San Francisco. We just never saw these. Mm. Um uh, this one looks to be in really great condition, which is 45,000 miles. And that renegade sort of off-white and blue interior uh, paint job is just so cool. Uh, 1980 means it is literally the very first eligible year for uh, Radwood. Uh, you could do um, a lot worse than showing up in one of these with a four-inch lift kit, Mickey Thompson wheels, and uh, some sick-ass tires. This is a no-reserve auction, again, out of Golden, Colorado. JP, earlier today, let me look at it and see if it's updated yet. Yeah. Eleven thousand dollars now on probably like uh, yeah nine bids. Not a lot of action, but I imagine somebody's going to pay up for this because where would you find another one this nice? Talk to me, JP. What about, uh, is the V8 the superior motor for this car, or is no. it just <laughs> absolutely is it a, not? Is it a novelty um, yeah. because it's too heavy? Now, nah, I mean, look, you know, it's a V8 with, uh, we were probably talking about 110, 120 horsepower. I mean, yeah. it's not a very powerful big engine. It has a ton of torque. It's probably got 200 pounds of torque or something. Right. Um, right. You know, so it's great for billy goating and stuff like that and schmobbing and pulling those wheels out of the mud. But look, the you know, unlike the Rubicon of the current Jeep generation, uh, which is kind of the you know, the, the top of the line one, the one that's got all the bells and whistles and lockers and is the super off-roady one. The Renegade was more kind of the sporty lower end one back in the day. And it, really? you know, yeah. So, um, but it was, it, because it was sporty, it was kind of like, you know, hipster and it had the cool graphics on it and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this one is very cool, but it has a lot of mods on it that I frankly don't like. Um, 
the, the tubular uh, like yeah, those, uh, rails those and the polished hat. tubes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got Jeep Wrangler. Like that door is not a. C- they didn't make hard doors for uh, CJ7s. Um, uh, you know, so they took the doors off of an XJ, which is fine. I mean, they fit, but oddly, they just they they don't fit well. I mean, if you look at the pictures, there's like uh, it, the seam is just not quite right. So I don't know, whatever. Um, you know, most of the time, if you're going to drive a CJ7, you're driving with no doors. And unlike the Wrangler, you can see in this picture very well, the windshield is completely independent of the roll bar. The Wrangler. Uh, of the next generation the xj connected the top of the uh, of the roll bar on the cj to the front of the windshield and kind of made it a little bit give it a little bit more integrity but these you can still fold the windshield down not that anyone does if you do that you will blow the seal in between the windshield and the dash and every time it rains you'll have a little waterfall on your feet um so uh you know that's just kind of left over from the old war jeeps um but yeah i mean these are i, I love the simplicity of the interior these is big gauge all it, it's like uh yeah. Kind of reminds you of a modern Mini, uh, Mini Cooper, right? They put that big gauge in the middle yeah. or the other way around. These terrible speakers that are not period correct. I mean, somebody just needs to be smacked in the head. You got this modern stereo thing in the middle. Um, a lot of nice touches on this thing. I So there is a picture somewhere in here that shows the Jeep in its, like, when the guy, the guy hasn't owned it very long. He got it and then did all these, like, silly modern mods. And it's just uh. so much better uh, if he just left it alone and, frankly... Uh, that's the thing to do if you wind up buying yeah. this car because it looks like, according to everything that I think I could see, that it is. I think all that old stuff comes with it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm looking for a picture if they have of it. Uh, I want to say that. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna bring up a picture of what it should look like. Uh, and here it is. Sorry, guys. There it is. Um, so you can see here, it's got the small white wheels. All right. Yep. And still, get, it's still got mutter tires on it, which are cool. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's just got this basic black bar up here. Uh, and then it's got this kind of cool, almost denim doors. And you can see they split in half. Wow. So you still have yep. a half door. Now, they look terrible with the soft top on that, you know, these just don't look good with the soft top on this car. What this car, it would be cool to see a picture of this without the soft top, but with these wheels lose yeah. this big stupid sticker across the windshield. Um, and, uh, yeah, it looks like, you know, whatever is, it looks like it's got some new exhaust and stuff. All right. So, I mean, that said, it's a very, very cool Jeep, uh, renegade and, and you're yeah. definitely going to look cool, but there, there isn't a really super huge shortage of these, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. If it were original, like this thing's been repainted and those are not the original decals. If it had the original decals and original paint, eh, you could be talking about something that would be actually worth a, quite a bit. But uh, this one's going to stall out because of the fact that it's not original. It just looks like it. It's just a cool Jeep. It'd be a great one to have. Yeah. If you well, can get it for JP, a decent price. You talked me out of my bid. I'm going to go no. $14,000. Yeah. That's a good bit. That's a good, that's a good yeah. bit. I, I am going to bit just a little bit over because I think some of the people are some, I mean, a lot of people like those big tires and stuff like that. And I, don't get me wrong. I'm, I put big tires on a Cayenne. So um, I'll say 15, <laughs> just bet the over, say it's got a, it's got a ways to go. It's got two and a half hours. Um, but uh, you might be right. This one might be more like a 12 and a half or something like that, but you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Golden Colorado, probably not the easiest place to get a car out of at this time of the year. So you know, it's a, it it's a cost. Jeep, so you can just mob out. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you get go. the four wheel drive. Uh, all right. So, and then the last car, what, what's the last car that we're going to talk about before we uh, end the week off here? JP, a 1989 Saab 900 yeah. turbo. Uh, boy, we have been all over Saabs lately. Um, let me read this to you. It has the airflow body kit, uh, which SPG. I remember. Yeah. That was such a modern, like future looking car mm. back in the uh, late eighties. Um, you know, they, they just, even though you knew what it was, it still turned heads every time you saw one. It was really, uh, I don't know, very ahead of its time. 94,000 miles on this example out of Knoxville, Tennessee. It does have a five speed manual. Uh, you know, that turbocharged front wheel drive system is kind of a kick to drive. Um, and, uh, Boy, we've enjoyed seeing some really nice sobs come across the auction block, particularly on Bring a Trailer, where this one is featured. Uh, and some action. It was at $12,000 on 20 bids. Um, it's at 13750 this morning on 26 bids. So I would say the audience is really feeling this one. Uh, look at that cool factory Momo steering wheel, JP. Mm. That's a Momo uh, really neat details about uh, Saab doesn't sell cars in the United States anymore. So these are these are really neat. Uh, I love that 
the, 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 they have a little renaissance and that these cars are, are, um, trade trading and transacting and that people are still out there driving them. Uh, I like the car. I believe in it. One to watch for sure. What do you think JP? Love them. Big, huge hatchback. That's actually one of the most useful hatchbacks of all time. I know that's a dumb thing to say about something, such a cool sporty car, but you can fold those seats down and a guy that's short as me can actually sleep back there. Um, the engine is slanted. Uh, it's <laughs> How an do in- you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I've done it. Yeah, it's slanted inline four cylinder, uh, 16 yep. valve engine. You can see a picture of it here. Um, the You can see the head is not right in the middle. It's because the, the, the thing is at an angle so that they could get it as low as possible within the engine bay. And as far back as possible, you see you got a lot of room between the front of the engine and the front of the car. Um, so, which gives these cars really good uh, weight. Uh, you know the way it's uh, distributed, and the engine is sitting directly over the top of the drive. Uh, axles. This is a front wheel drive car, so it does torque steer. Uh, but you're talking about a car that actually does unbelievably well uh, in the wet and snow. And uh, people love these up in uh, Montana. They are all over the place. Um, yep. This this appears to be a very good one. The, the the thing about these old sobs, they feel like they're chiseled out of a piece of a single piece of steel or something. They have that same kind of click that a that a car like a Mercedes or a Porsche has yep. uh, of the era. And that big fishbowl bowl front windshield is just a great place to. Kind Kind of look at it the world while you drive one around. Um, That's right. Bummer does have a couple of cracks in the dash, which uh, I know. if you watch the show, Deeb and I are, <laughs> uh, that just really hurts it because <laughs> replacing that is impossible. Um, yeah, other than those two flaws, it looks really nice. A little bit of faded patina paint, but who cares? If patina paint's great. Um, I, I think despite this couple of little problems, I think uh, this car probably uh, could do well, but it's not going to be great. I mean, four and a half hours to go, where do you think it's going to land? So out of Knoxville, Tennessee, with 94,000 miles, a lot of action. I think there's going to be some competition for this car. Uh, so it's basically at 14. I, I'm i going to stay on my bid, $18,000. I'm going to leave it there. Mm. I think that's a good price for the car. Uh, it'd be well bought and well sold if it lands uh, near my price. So what do you think, JP? Yeah, I think you're right there, uh, 17 to 20. So I'll go under and say 17. It's got okay. a long way to go, and it doesn't look like it's got a ton of action. But uh, super, super cool car. Great and week. with, with 95,000 miles, it's got 250,000 to go. All right, there it is. You guys have watched a, uh, a whole week of Bid Nerds. You have nerded out with us on your daily nerd yeah. on the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, out of San Francisco. I'm in Las Vegas. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We've got some new types of videos that we're going to be uh, putting out here pretty soon. And uh, look for us Monday through Friday. We'll be back on Monday. Might even release a video over the weekend. Who knows? Stick around. If you hit that subscribe, like, and notification button, you'll You'll know know when those videos come out. So uh, help spread the word, guys. We're a new channel, and uh, we really need uh, all the the press we can get. So please help us out. uh, Or just go on the page and tell us we're terrible. That's fine, too. Um, Yeah. See you guys next week. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.